<laughs> okay, we're back. We're live with Likeable Science here on a given Friday. And my co-host, who is the host actually really, is Ethan Allen. Hi, Ethan. Hey, Jay. How are you doing? <laughs> Good. I really enjoy these conversations with you. It's like Mr. Science, you know, <laughs> except you're the scientist, not me. Anyway, so the thing we, we decided to talk about today is about artificial intelligence. And what do we call this? Uh, new miracles with artificial intelligence. And what, what provoked this whole discussion is a piece in this morning's MIT, uh, MIT newsletter, mm -hmm. uh, which talks about artificial intelligence um, with the capability of taking large volumes of text um, of any kind and summarizing them in short paragraphs to tell you what they're really saying. Right. And I remember, you know, I remember in years past in my law firm, they would we would take the junior associate and tell him, here's here's a book of text. <laughs> you know, you read the whole thing, make little notes, and then tell us in a paragraph what it says. Right. You know, or the West Publishing Company, sure. all the legal publishing company, give you one sentence about what this case says, right. and and now it can be automatic. Mm -hmm. It's quite remarkable. Right. right. How do they do that, Ethan? Uh, yeah, no, it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a sort of this quantum leap from computers simply understanding words to actually understanding the meaning of whole sentences and, sentences and whole paragraphs, right? Which is really a very different thing to, to, to grasp the point of, of, and it's not just go do this, you know, it, it, it's, yeah. it's much, much more sophisticated to be able to extract meaning and, and put something back out. How do you do that? Yeah. I, I, you know, well, artificial intelligence is like a miracle. Well, it's, it's like magic. Well, it's again, it's what they call this deep learning uh, yeah. business where, where you don't try to just program every possible scenario into it. You, you set the machine up and, and let it start extracting meaning out, out of the world as it finds it. You know? Imagine, you know, how powerful it is. You have a long document, um, could be anything. And the machine, the machine is looking through it, looking mm -hmm. for words, looking for phrases, right. trying to you know get a pattern, mm -hmm. pattern count on right. that and the other thing, sort of like what NSA does with our email, <laughs> <laughs> and trying to make sense. But I'm sure NSA is using artificial intelligence in the same way. I'm sure they must be right. But if you think about it too, then this gets in the whole thing. You know, who, who has written the software to extract what from it and to give it what kind of slant, right? I mean, if if it's if these machines start reading the bills that are going through the House or the Senate and extracting them, are they going to give it a conservative or a liberal slant, the, the summary? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, you know, it's, it's really mind-boggling. So the thing has to go through. It's going to find a word. We're going to put the word over here. Let's hold that word. That's going to find that word again over here in a different context. Mm -hmm. And then we see what the context is, and we compare the two, and then we learn something from that. And, and it's doing this with every word in the whole, you know, whatever, thousands of pages, whatever right. it is. Uh, and then it's make, sort of making sense of which words are more important, which ones are repeated, in what context. And it's, it's like learning. It's making exactly. rules about what this is all about. And then ultimately it's coming up with a conclusion. It's brilliant yeah. to be able I mean, to do that. But they talk about reinforcement learning now in, in these machines, where these machines are basically set up to reward them, I guess reward themselves, I don't know what the machine gives itself as a reward, for <laughs> really? sort of uh, finding a pattern and sort of being able to make sense out of that and seeing how it that repeats and can be used again. Uh, and that's, I mean, again, and we've talked about this before, the uh, AlphaGo system, the, 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 the software that, that beat the world champions in, yeah, in, yeah. A, in, a, in a Go tournament. Uh, you know, it didn't really know, no one ever taught it particularly anything about Go, uh, other than the very basic rules, which are incredibly simple. But it basically learned very subtle, very sophisticated things. They point out in one of these articles that AlphaGo, 37 moves into the game, made a move that when people saw it, the observers who are expert Go players looked at it and thought the machine was crazy, that there was some fluky, weird mistake that it had made, because it was it just placed a new dot somewhere that made no sense to anyone. And later on in deep analysis, they found out that this machine had calculated one, that no person would virtually ever make this move. There was like a one in 10,000 chance that anyone would ever make that move, so no one would think about it. Yeah. And two, that it was a very powerful move to make. Yeah. And therefore, of course, it completely sort of blindsided its human opponent with yeah. it and, and blew the guy so out of the game. Very, yeah. very creative. Yeah. And it's not like that move was programmed no, in no, its no. inventory of no. moves. No. It invented the. So exactly. It, it saw a, an interesting opportunity and, yeah, saw this was, this, this was apparently a good thing to do on a lot of levels for it to, to win the game. You you know? think, about, think about that as a, as, um, as a, as a method, a, a, a pathway 
to deal with problems of all kinds in all endeavors, human right. endeavors, uh, then you realize the applicability. I want to talk to you about that. Um, you know, I, and I, uh, I just, uh, my, my thought about this is that it's going to change humanity. Uh, it can write, for example. So when it goes into this document and writes a summary for you, mm -hmm. uh, it, it writes it. It's writing the English language or whatever sure. language. Sure. It's actually composing sentences. Mm -hmm. That's another element. It's talking to you in English. Mm -hmm. It's not talking to you in the language, you know, in the in the the, the words and the terms that it has just analyzed. Right. It has created it's a third party observation and it's giving you an yeah. explanation of right. what it has learned. So the learning and the explanation are two separate things. Right. So that's another incredible function. Right, and presumably it can give you a summary in Chinese or Arabic or Hindustani sure. or whatever. language is no yeah. barrier. Right, yeah. I, I mean, I wonder what the code looks like. I, I can't, it must be incredible. <laughs> I got, I got, yeah. So let's talk about the implications and, and the other ways that, um, you know, this kind of thing. You know, one thing, for example, we just had a show about about congressional process in Washington. Oh, that's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> now is really hard. Um, but, you know, we have legislation that is special interest legislation. We have legislation that is, you know, based in animosity, mm -hmm. based on all the wrong reasons, you know, em emotional, low mm -hmm. reasons, you know, bad reasons. Why can't we do legislation with artificial intelligence, Ethan? Can you think of a good reason why we can't do that? Yeah. It couldn't do much worse than our current government. <laughs> <Thank> you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It can only be better. Right, right. Um, at least it will look at evidence, presumably, and say, yes, there is. there are reasons to believe that this is a good policy and that we should do this, and no, there aren't any reasons to do the other. Or there are reasons for it, and this is going to benefit these groups, and but it's going to hurt these groups, and it's, you know. You know I'm not saying that you know. uh, we can get input. They can, right. People could come and testify. Mm -hmm. They can testify as long as they want. They can write tomes right. about whether to do it or not do it, and this artificial intelligence machine would be able to summarize right. in its right. own learning process right. what's the good, what's the bad, make some judgment calls, and, right. you know, incorporate a huge amount of right. data. Go, go make research. Right. Go, you know, inquire, right. go extend the inquiry. But, but again, then, you're, you're placing a fair amount of trust in whoever sort of built that machine. That's right? another issue. <laughs> <laughs> that, that their political agenda is neutral or positive in some sense. Uh, no, that's, that's the scary part. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that within the next, what, decade or two, uh, because uh, there's a lot of smart guys, and you know how computer programming is sort of geometric, you know, mm -hmm. it keeps on getting smarter and smarter, it's faster and faster. Let's assume we can do this, but as you said, you raised this question earlier, it pervades the whole discussion. What's the, what's the agenda here? Is the agenda built in the code? Right, and hopefully now that should become clearer as we move ahead because they're now asking that machines be able to explain why they make certain decisions. So you can see this, and we've talked before about self-driving cars. And if your car suddenly chooses to stop, presumably it's got some reason that it's chosen to stop in the middle of a highway, right? It's either seen something or it's uh, sensed some approaching danger, right? And it should be able to tell you that, right? I mean, it's not doing this as a random, like, oh, gee, I feel like stopping right now. <laughs> sure, it should be able yeah, to tell you yeah. in English. Right. In succinct English. And, and I mean, we saw, I just you know, saw recently the, the earliest nuances of this. Uh, my wife and I were driving, and she was driving, and thought the cruise control on this rental car was broken because the car <laughs> would slow down sometimes yeah. below it, it, the speed. Yeah. And then what she realized was that was only when her vehicle was coming closer to a vehicle in front of it, the car would slow down, and as soon as she would move to an open lane, her car would resume its cruise control speed immediately. Uh, but again, it knew, and it, and it presumably could have told us this, yes, you're approaching this car ahead. At yeah, well, almost, the screen comes right. up, it's, you know, it would be no right. uh, effort at all, the screen right. comes up and says, um, you know, uh, you're approaching another right. car, right. silly, why are you doing that? We're stopping you. Right. And tell you why. So. Yeah. You were involved in the learning process. Right. You yeah. learned too. And it, 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 it beeps at you as you cross white lines now. These, these cars, just so you'll know, like, oh, you've moved into a different lane. Yeah. And then if you are doing this too often, it begins to wonder, are you, you know, are you drifting off to sleep and, yeah. and sort of bouncing back and forth on the road? Yeah, and, and it, it reports it, you. Yes, and it begins to alert you. Uh, soon the police will be involved. <laughs> They'll want to have a report of yeah. this. Yeah. And your insurance company, yeah. too, right. will raise your rates. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but this all, this all, um, this, that sort of primitive 
primitive in the sense right. you're talking about a car that's driven by a human person. Right. Soon enough, in not many years, AI, all through AI, the very AI you're talking mm -hmm. about, will enable us to have automated cars, which is right. near, near term. And, and there was a wonderful study recently done that they actually put um, like 20 human drivers and one automated car into the track. And the 20 drivers, with human drivers, they would tend to, cars would tend to bunch up and they'd get these sort of traffic jam things. Simply putting one AI car in there actually smoothed the whole traffic flow out. And, and the, the drivers wouldn't bunch up in the same way because this car understood and sort of, you know, it's the same kind of thing if, if you watch a flock of birds, right? Yeah. And they move as if they're one organism, right? They, it, yeah. the, the flock will swirl yeah, yeah, and stretch yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. And all these birds are, they're not all plotting an elaborate course, right? They're actually running off of fairly simple rules about how they behave to their relatives. These are the next bird. Right, yeah. And it's the same sort of thing now that our cars are starting to do. You know, we're, we're starting yeah. our, our cars to be flock members. The you know, swarm, or, the flock. They already got this kind of thing of for drones, right? Right. The drones fly in a swarm. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, all kinds of drones are doing this mm -hmm. now. You've seen them. And uh, th that means it's the same sort of rules. They mm -hmm. all connect up in some way. They watch the guy next to them. Before mm -hmm. you know it, the swarm is moving in exactly mm -hmm. the right place and coordinated. Right. But you know, this suggests, this sort of coordination suggests, um, you know, more about my legislative uh, <laughs> initiative. Um, you know, it means that the legislature would compare notes with other legislatures. Mm -hmm. In fact, so you know, the national, I mean, let's assume the country stays in the same general legal configuration. So uh, Congress mm -hmm. is doing its thing, taking testimony, making, making decisions, mm -hmm. uh, giving reasons, <laughs> yeah. detailed reasons why it made the decisions. It's comparing notes with the state legislatures, mm -hmm. who are likewise have a little box about that big, mm -hmm. <laughs> right, doing AI, what's going on in mm -hmm. the state. Um, I guess it's a, the, the old federal state system, but query, do you need multiple boxes? <laughs> or you can have one big box. Right. And query, what is the agenda of that one big box? Yeah. What if some wise guy pro programmer decided he was gonna put something in there right. to favor this or that or the <laughs> other thing, and now you have the whole country run on, on some kind of corrupt agenda. Right. And I mean, once you're going to do it on that level, like, like why, why bother respecting national boundaries? Let's just go up and put the whole, put AI in charge of the whole world. Thank right? you. And, and, the whole and, world. And, and, you know, about that big. Yeah, tell us, tell us how we should be behaving. Yeah. Now, by the way, we didn't talk about the president yet. <laughs> but I don't know why you need a, a human being to be a president. Why mm -hmm. can't you have an AI president? Yeah, I think it'd be a lot more rational than what we got now. Oh, oh yeah. And a lot safer. That's and, true. Uh, you know, a lot more in tune with the, the people. Right. Uh, if you, you know, the machine would listen to the people. It would right. summarize all right. the testimony. It right. would come to some reasonable conclusion right. if programmed. Presumably would not send out nasty tweets. <laughs> right. It would send out nice tweets. <laughs> Explain, you know, explanation right. tweets. Right. There we go. <laughs> See, I, 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 this is a great idea. I, I like it. I like I it. Hope, I hope it happens soon. <laughs> but wait, we haven't talked about the courts yet. <laughs> I've always thought, you know, I mean, the law is mechanized in mm -hmm. a certain sense. You go to court, everybody's got the, the, the precedent out. You can find it very easily now on the web. You can, uh, you can not only find the case that supports you, you can find all the cases that, that oppose you. Mm -hmm. And you can, you know, argue them out in front of a judge. Well, um, why can't that judge be a little box this big, right. uh, artificial intelligence, and he listens. He listens dutifully to everybody. He summarizes in his own mind. He's really smart, this little box. And you know he makes a decision, and mm -hmm. then he explains his decision. Right. And you can see that he's in the right place. Yeah. You can see he's made good judgments. Yeah. Why can't we do that, Ethan? No, uh, and there's actually there's virtually no reason we couldn't do that. I, I presume you'd want to put a system like that in place with some sort of human oversight, where the judge, the judge box, would, would make a recommendation, and a human panel might, you know, at least for the first few thousand of them, would decide whether that was reasonable or not reasonable, right? Uh, but I, you know, I really think this is coming, mm -hmm. and the question is whether it looks like the government we have. Mm -hmm. you, do you have a president? Do you have a Congress mm -hmm. box? Do you have a state <laughs> box in every state, or is it just one box that uh, all the right. you know the checks and balances are already in the one box? Right. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's, it's hard to imagine in the human condition a box that would be smart enough to say, now, now, boys, right. just relax. Right. We're not going to do any wars. Right. We're gonna, everybody has to act properly, right. and we're going to make all those value judgments for you. Just listen. Right. And if you don't listen, we'll yeah. make you listen. There we go. All right. <laughs>
<laughs> scary. So much so, let's take a break. Okay. Okay, we're back, we're live, we're in an exciting discussion about AI, we're calling this here on Likeable Science uh, with Ethan Allen, my co-host. We're talking about new miracles with AI, it's, and it's really, it's, it's, it's dazzling, it's miraculous, but it's also a little scary. Right. Um, we talked about the, you know, the swarm effect and how mm -hmm. um, an object um, which is run by AI would know what the other objects are doing, even if they weren't the same object. Mm -hmm. Everybody would have its place. You could order society this way, not only the cars on the highway, everybody knows mm -hmm. this place. Um, and so, you know, the power of this is to, you know, govern, to make political decisions, legal decisions, regulatory decisions, engineering decisions, it, it, would, it would be nearly perfect. Well, I don't know. Did, did, nearly, did, would, did you would ever be, read a book many years ago, it's a small child, I read it, uh, A Wrinkle in Time, Madeline Lengel's rather dystopian view of when there's a... Uh, well, a, well, a tell a, us about it. Yeah. All, all the kids are bouncing the, the, their balls all yeah. in, in sync with one another. <laughs> I mean, it just... Right. Yeah, very... Right, hmm. or uh, that, that Jim Carrey movie. What was it uh, with the white picket fences? Uh, the Truman Story. Oh, Remember yes, that? Right, Everybody yes. behaves right. just a certain way. Don't, right. don't diverge. Don't... So, you know, that's the problem. But, is, but be, between now and then, before you even get to that problem, is will people accept the replacement of human judgment, however flawed it may be, with a machine? Well, yeah. th this is exactly why I brought up the, the thing earlier with, with the, the cruise control in the car. People are accepting it. You're not hearing an outcry about, you know, cruise control is taking over my, my life. Yes, people don't want to get driving their cars, maybe, but they're perfectly willing to have the car tell them basically and indeed act in their best interest and make their life safer and or easier. Now there are maybe some drivers who don't want to, a driver who wants to tailgate may find it's very hard to tailgate. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm smiling because I'm thinking of two millennials who are coding this thing and one says to the other, we need a very authoritative voice on this box. <laughs> Let's see if we can get an Edward R. Murrow voice here so that when we tell people what they need to do, they'll believe us and accept right away. I think that conversation would probably take place huh. because you have to be authoritative about it if you want people to follow it. Uh, and not only the voice, but everything it does, it has to be credible. Mm -hmm. You know, <clears throat> what, did, what was it, uh, Hal right. uh, in, in two, um, 2001? A, a, a space Odyssey, right, yes. Uh, I forget the fellow's name who was in the spaceship with him, right. but it said something like, uh, Steve, <laughs> you can't do that here. <laughs> And of course, Hal went crazy. Right. And that, and that's really the old fear about all of this. Right. Is that however you program it, you know, whatever the program it puts in, however it it teaches itself, you know, because the problem is, yes, you could you could put an agenda in. Remember, though, this right. is AI. Right. And AI learns. Right. And AI will make its own agenda. Right. And you don't know what that will be. Right. And, and uh, some decision that. It, it makes it looks crazy to you may actually be a very smart decision as again we just saw with it with uh, AlphaGo yeah. uh, where it made it what was a crazy move according yeah. to all the observers and it turned out to be that was it was the move that sort of shifted the whole game into winning mode you know? so you, you know it's all yeah. science fiction right. so you say well okay you can have any decision you want but don't kill anybody okay we don't we, right. it's, right. a, it's a, it's a special hard-coded thing yeah, Asimov's three three laws of robotics or whatever right right <laughs> right and so 
I mean, you know, I suppose that would have, you need to do that because otherwise you wouldn't know. Point is that the, the guy who might write an agenda is not really the end of the program because the program learns and could find its own way to do whatever it wants, like that special move and go. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I don't know how we fix that, and I don't know how people not worry about that. Mm -hmm. Would you worry about that? Yeah, I, I mean, I'd be I'd be concerned about about it. Uh, I, I'd want to see. I'd want to see sort of the system in operation in what we, what we call sort of low-risk, you know, situations, and have it working really well for a good long while before I'd be willing to sort of turn over my whole life and accept it unquestioningly, right? Yeah. Um, but it's fun. I don't feel that way about cars. I mean, I'd, I'd happily have a self-driving car and sit back. Yeah. You know. But you know, what surprised me actually is that the, the, I forget who got. I think Apple got a permit or something recently from California. <clears throat> to test their cars, and the same with mm -hmm. Google, and I, one of the major car companies too. And what surprised me is they actually gave them a permit, because I think a lot of people in government, you know, with a bureaucratic mm -hmm. kind of look at things, um, will want to retain control. They mm -hmm. will not want to have a machine, uh, arguably controlled by the programmer, um, doing things on their turf. Mm -hmm. So they will resist. And, and I suggest to you that this question I asked you about, would you, would you agree with this, is a question a lot of people would ask. And when government, who holds the keys, um, is asked that question, they're going to say, I, I don't want to give up my, my authority here, because I know in the end I'll be out of a job. Yeah. Know? And I mean, there's an interesting thing, and I, we are actually we're in the midst of sort of a, a struggle right now. Uh, it, are you going to let sort of government control those things, or are you going to let sort of private industry control all those things, and, and the marketplace, as it were? And uh, I would certainly argue there are functions that are not well controlled by a marketplace-type situation, uh, healthcare and education being two obvious mm. things where I, I don't really want a competitive market in those. I, I, want, I want somebody with oversight saying you know, what's, what's best for the patients or what's best for the kids, you know? and. Yes, you right. consider some economic issues, but. Well, you know, but as you say that, I think to myself, industry uh, can be very influential and very crafty, and they can get the government to be an extension of their, you know, mm -hmm. self-interest. They can get the government to be as self-interested in their view of things as they are. Sure. And so, government, at least in our recent lifetimes, I think government has gotten maybe too sensitive to that and, and, and has adopted self-interest as a motivating feature rather than doing the common good. Mm -hmm. I wish we could go back to a time when Mr. Smith went to Washington and, go, right. and we did the common good. Oh. Um, but you can program a machine to do the common good. The, per the machine would have no self-interest. Uh, the machine would, would be programmed mm -hmm. to, to do it in the interest of, of the community in general. Mm -hmm. That would be infinitely better than the, the, the problem of humanity. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we are sitting here. We're, we're you know, we're sort of replaying the tragedy of the commons every day in terms of you know keep throwing plastic and crud into the oceans because sort of hey they're big oceans you know it's not you know disappears as soon as you throw it in there and it's gone right but of course it really isn't gone it just you know adds to more crud and more crud and yeah a, a sort of sensible reasonable overseer, as it were, would say, hey, you can't keep doing this indefinitely. This is bad for the ocean. It's bad for all the life forms in there. It's ultimately going to hurt your fisheries. It's going to deprive three billion people a day of the protein they need. And, you know, it's sort of a, a stupid lose-lose situation, so let's not do it. Right, right. So we don't do it. It's right. a priority. Right. You know, it reminds me of the comparison of the American democratic system, and for that matter, the European democratic system in China which is more totalitarian. Mm -hmm. And if Xi Jinping finds, and, and his Politburo and his Central Committee mm -hmm. find, that a given thing, like you know, damaging the environment is not a good thing, he can come down and say, no, we're not doing that. And, and mm -hmm. my, my word counts. Don't have a big discussion. My word counts. Mm -hmm. That's the end of the conversation. All done. Uh, same thing with like sea level rise. Mm -hmm. We're going to protect this harbor, this island, this shore from sea level rise. That's a high priority mm -hmm. because we look ahead. We, we Xi Jinping and mm -hmm. the Politburo uh, and the Central Committee, and for that matter, the black box, mm -hmm. have the capability of looking ahead and making a decision based on what they see in the future, not within the election cycle. Mm -hmm. Relative to that, our system is not nearly, our system here is not necessary, not, not nearly as efficient, don't you think? Right, right. No, our system, yeah, takes longer to change. It's very sort of sluggish to respond to changes. People do get sort of their vested self-interest dig, dig into place. Right. So. 
when we, for instance, face issues of rising sea level, it's, there's going to be 1,000, 10,000, 100,000 lawsuits about being pushed off of your co nice coastal <laughs> right, land. Exactly. Yeah. Whereas in China, yes, they're going to just say, tomorrow, you guys are all leaving your houses and you're moving 20 miles inland. End of discussion. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. And it's done. Yeah. And, you know, that's. I mean, both, so, both things have their well, pluses, both things have their minuses. I think this is going to happen. You know? uh, and right. the only question is when it's going to happen and what resistance it meets before it does happen. Right. But we, we start seeing things like sea level rise and other environmental issues mm -hmm. that we, we can't, you know, we, this country, we can't see into the future. We, right. we just have blinders on about that. Mm -hmm. uh, someday we're going to have to have a machine tell us, no, you've got you to do this. Yeah, well, I mean, the recent uh, slew of evidence that's accumulating that, that points out that a lot of common air pollutants, particularly the tiny particulates that, that are ubiquitous now, basically are uh, associated with the onset of dementia. And clearly, it's not in anyone's interest to have a whole population of people getting dementia earlier than they need to or uh, earlier than they should otherwise. And, and yet, basically, people are still you know, building new coal plants and spewing this stuff out in, out in the air, even though, uh, you know, Five years, ten years down the road, it's going to be huge human health costs. Public health is yeah. huge, and you could yeah. you could <clears throat> save a population, right. give them much better health care, right. um, and you can also uh, what was it in 1984 where they all marched down a road at the end, and that was the end of them. <laughs> you reach a certain age or uh, mm -hmm. life condition, that was the end of you. And I mean that may be hard on. Well, it might be not too hard. You know, you know, a sort of a death with dignity kind of thing. At the end, that was the end. In the meantime, the population in general, it's like the herd, right. has to get culled, right? Sure. It, the population in general, you say that's a, a immoral, but I'm not sure it is immoral. No, I mean, you look at, now this was from some years ago I heard this figure, I don't know what it is today, but, but the, at that point they pointed out that something like 60 cents of every dollar in our health care system went to care in the last 30 days of people's lives. Yeah. And, Whereas less than two cents at that point is yeah. going to prenatal care or something, which yeah. is like insane. And what did I see recently? The last six months yeah. of uh, a person's life in this country, um, that person will, his health care costs will be six times the average health care cost. Right. It's just, it's, you know, and it's, yeah. it's not efficient and it doesn't help them very much yeah. either. And, and all of long term studies in public health show that indeed giving young children, particularly neonatal and, and in the early years, giving them good care, good health, good healthy food, good environment, pays off big time. It pays, sure. off, it pays off in education, it pays off in the kids' health, sure. it pays off in their social adjustment, and, and it continues to pay off for decades down the road. You know? yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, just take a, a, a grocery store. There's all kinds of junk food in there that mm -hmm. is damaging the, pop the health of the population. Mm -hmm. Um, and we, we just not, we haven't gotten to the point where we actually make rational choices, I mean, as a government, mm -hmm. about what should be on those shelves and what shouldn't be on those shelves, right. because a lot of it is damaging our, our children and ourselves. So, I, you know, I, I do hearken back to the notion that in some cases, a good machine with lots of authority <laughs> would actually be, you know, a better deal. And furthermore, that a good machine could make complex decisions mm -hmm. without the baggage of, you know, emotional, host, hostile, um, you know, aggravated, uh, imperfect decisions. Right. Um, you know, for example, and I leave you with this rhetorical question, you can respond or not. Um, would, would a machine do better at the health care bill? You bet it would. <laughs> <laughs> Again, could it be worse. <laughs> and so many things that are pending in Congress right, right now. Right. And how long would it take? <laughs> not long. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Thank you, Ethan. Thank you, James. Always great. Fun to talking to you. Yes, indeed. Aloha. All right. <laughs>